You're listening to Let's Talk Creation, the science podcast that's just for you. All right, Marcus, you've been quiet over there. Where did they go? (laughs) Are they still around? Could I go to the jungles Um, of Africa? (laughs) Could I Did go, they go to the, the Hollow Hatsukui? Earth? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Hollow Earth. Yeah, there, there we go. Uh, good old Jules Verne and, uh, and, and the beginning of real science. Um, yeah, where do they go? So, uh, yeah, that's a that's a difficult question for us because they're, you know, as Matt was just saying, like, we have a lot of different ones. And if if somewhere, let's just throw the middle number, I have 50 of them are, are brought on board the Ark what happens afterwards? Why aren't they running around uh, killing people today? Why is Jurassic Park, you know, not just like any other day uh, out there, <laughs> praise the Lord, right? It's, just, it's not. Um, so we have we have a little bit of explanatory work to do over here. And I, Kurt Wise, I think, had, had put a, a good point to this, is that um, when you take a look at the plant communities that are typically associated with the dinosaur fossils. Uh, if you're looking at uh, the Morrison Formation in uh, Colorado, Utah, et cetera, um, it, some people might not realize that when you find a, a dinosaur bone bed, like what Matt work, has you know worked on now for quite a number of years over at the Chadwick dig, um, is that there's other things that are found along with that, uh, not just dinosaurs and not even just like one kind of dinosaur. There's a bunch, but then you also get things like, you know pollen you get wood material and plant tissue you might have fish scales and all sorts of other things that are part of the entire ecosystem that is you know associated with the animals now we care about the dinosaurs a lot because that's what we all love Uh, but there's lots of other really cool and interesting stuff that's found along with those dinosaurs little mammals various types of lizards and and other reptiles of, of different types but the plant uh, community is interesting because Kurt had noted that when we look around the world, the plants that we see that dominate the world right now are not the plants that seem to dominate the ecosystems in which the dinosaurs are primarily found. Uh, those are mostly gymnosperm plants, you know, large tree ferns and cycads and uh, things like that. And you look around the world today and those plants, when you do find them, are in very marginal environments. They are really pushed off to the side compared to the flowering plants, uh, the the um, the angiosperm group that totally dominates the world today. And so Kurt had made a, a supposition that you know if the dinosaurian uh, plant communities don't thrive after the flood, then that is going to wreak havoc on the reestablishment of a dinosaurian ecosystem. Um, it, it certainly is going to explain, I think, a lot of why we don't have uh, dinosaurian herbivores uh, around. It might not help us entirely with why we don't have dinosaurian carnivores unless their behavior is very specific to uh, predatory behavior towards certain types of creatures. Um, so I, I think that uh, that helps us to explain why dinosaurian communities did not reestablish themselves. Um, also given their larger size on average than mammals uh, and birds and other animals might have been a competitive disadvantage in the world that had been ravaged by the flood and is now resource poor. If you're an animal that has high resource requirements and there's just not much out there compared to an animal that can burrow underground for a little while and wait it out until some things grow or or some things die and take advantage of, of that, then that might put the dinosaurs at a distinct disadvantage compared to other organisms. So those are some of the the clues and ideas that we might have about why it is that dinosaurs, if they are brought on the ark, don't reestablish themselves. Um, And, you know, they may have hung hung on for a while, but it, it, at least to me, I don't see them hanging on for very long. I'm I'm not big on a lot of the dinosaur and dragon war uh, type of stuff. Uh, I, I just don't find it has quite enough evidence for me to jump on board for it. Uh, yeah, somebody made a tapestry in 1400 that looks like maybe it could have been a cetacosaurid, um, but I don't think so. I think it's just a weird beastie. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of what they drew, you know. Um, so with, with that, I think the dinosaurian community, along with lots of other things, I mean, we're, we're talking dinosaurs here, but the fossil record is chock full of stuff that isn't with us right now. 
I mean, huge amphibians the size of, of crocodilians and, you know, stuff like that. Oh, Matt's got a book. What do we got there, Matt? We've got a medieval bestiary. <laughs> oh, nice. I was just going to show you their drawing of a crocodile so everyone can understand when he yeah, says that they're drawing right. beasts. Um, yeah, in the medieval bestiaries, is... you, you often get people drawing animals that they've never seen before. Um, yeah. So it can get pretty weird. It's pretty weird really fast. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and, and, I, I can't find you're... the crocodile at the moment, but this is this is right right there. That's great. We've got some kind of snake that? creature with wings attacking, huh? possibly a elephant. I don't know what that is. Nice. It's got a weird lip. Yeah. So <laughs> no, I mean like, it's a taper. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah. So yeah, a wing a winged dragon uh, type of thing mm-hmm. that somebody you know heard and has you know written or, or read because Plato wrote about it at some point, you know, or what have you. And so, yeah, obviously there must have been Atlantis and there must have been dragons because Plato knew about these things. And you're like, uh, did Plato see them? Um, you know, I, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, now, one of the, the other things that had been brought up earlier, uh, Todd had mentioned the, um, uh, the asteroid impact. And David had said nicely that, you know, we can agree on the data of the geological column, you know, that that representation of different types of rocks with characteristic fossils found above and below other types of rocks that have characteristic fossils gives us, you know, this, this overall vertical record, if you will. And in that record is evidence of a giant asteroid impact that while just pretty bad and, and left evidence of itself pretty much globally. I and mean, we can geochemically trace this stuff uh, to the impact site in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Uh, and that seems to be coincident with the last dinosaur fossils, uh, stuff that Matt is, you know, excavating up in uh, Wyoming is really close to that last border. Um, but one thing that's, I think, underappreciated in uh, creationists writing about that, even including my own, is that, you know, those are just the very last of the dinosaurs. There's There's been dinosaurs that have been dying and being buried in the flood for a real long time. So when we think about you know, where that is, and it's it's at the last of the dinosaurs, that's what most people consider to be the extinction of the dinosaurs following lots of other extinctions until we get to the T-Rex, Triceratops communities and, you know, things like that. But from a flood perspective, it is, in a sense, kind of merely coincident with some of the last few dinosaurs that are, um, that are buried uh, during the flood. Um, and then, you know, we have a question of, well, what happens afterwards? You know, is that than the beginning of, of other biomes that are being destroyed during the flood, or is this after the flood? Um, and it, much of us here are going to be in, in broad agreement that what's above that is probably after the flood. Uh, but there's a lot of other creationists who think that we're still in the flood for some time um, before we eventually get to the post-flood period. You've just heard a clip from the Let's Talk Creation podcast. If you want to check out full episodes, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you want to check out other streaming options, visit us at coresci.org forward slash podcast. That's C-O-R-E-S-C-I dot O-R-G forward slash podcast. <laughs>